we've got a lot to cover. We're going to be giving the fire fins a second shot. We're also going to be trying out the surfer mount and the woos at the same time. And last but not least, we're going to be trying our new 101 mast with a race wing on the foil board. And because it happened, I'll talk about how to recover a sonic kite if the wing tip gets tangled. We bought this second foil board so we can both foil at the same time. It's exactly the same as our other foil except for the mast. It's quite a bit taller. It's the Moses 101 and the reason we bought it is because our friend Nicholas recommended that we should. Because of that 11 centimeters difference when I'm going through um, higher wind conditions with the waves and stuff you know it makes a difference right because you sit a lot higher you can go through those waves a lot easier. When I began foiling I started with 90 centimeter mast. I bought a 101 uh, there's a huge difference I find with the 101, it allows me to have a steeper angle of attack so I can pop a lot better into my jumps. After our trip board review, we got a couple comments saying that we did not click in the fire fins correctly, and that's likely why we lost all four fins. Thankfully, Firefin was kind enough to send us a couple new sets so we could give them a second shot. So I'm gonna install it right now, and the key is you wanna hear multiple loud clicks when you press firmly against the board. It's also not a bad idea to wiggle them around and try to pull them off just to make sure that the fins are on tightly. It was nice, and then all of a sudden the wind really picked up and got really punchy. And like with the Sonic, I knew I was going to end up swimming. You know, I was out there and it was just like really punchy, and the kite collapsed a couple of times. I recovered it, and then finally it just bow tied, and that was it. All right, so I just came in and we clipped off the larger fins and replaced them with the smaller ones. I'm going to head back on the water and see what the difference is. able to do some woo versus surfer comparisons which you'll see overlaid on the screen. Um, this wasn't a full review by any means, it was just kind of a fun comparison to do. So the good news, we have all four of our fire fin fins still, which is great. Actually, we have all eight because I did switch halfway through the session. So we definitely did install them incorrectly when we did the trip board review. So our apologies to Firefin, and thank you so much again for replacing them with the two new sets. We appreciate it. So comparing the smaller fins to the larger fins, there's definitely a noticeable difference. The smaller fins, there's just way less grip than the larger fins, and you feel that when you're riding as well as when you're turning the board. I felt, particularly in the choppy, wavy conditions that we had today, that the board felt much more loose, much more skatey in the waves um, compared to the larger fins that I'm accustomed to. But I'm definitely looking forward to trying them out in different conditions. So my first impression on the new foil board with the 101 mast was that I didn't really like it. <laughs> um, I was definitely doing the up and down thing like I used to when I was learning to foil board. 
um, which apparently is because I wasn't going fast enough. I felt a little bit off kilter, um, just really wasn't adjusting right away, but I think if, given some more time, I think I will figure it out. So a few things that we noticed from our surfer versus woo test today. First of all, all three devices judged three different jumps as the highest one. Also, all three devices missed jumps from time to time, with Wu generating more phantom jumps than Surfer. We call phantom jumps those that are in the 1 to 2 meter range that are probably the result of riding and chop in small waves. Surfer readings are about 1 to 2 meters lower than Wu, but not always. Which one is more accurate? Well, we can't tell without a proper setup, so you can be the judge. One thing that we noticed is that the bottom Wu consistently recorded higher jump heights compared to the centered Wu, about 3 quarters of a meter on average. This may be the result of the positioning of the sensor, device-specific variations, or both. More testing is needed. So I had a pretty epic bail on the Sonic 13, drank a lot of water, and uh, the kite got all tangled up in the bridles. And as you'll see in the footage, I had to crash it multiple times. And you may be wondering why was she doing that? Well, a trick that we've learned is that when the bridle, when the kite gets all tangled up in the bridles that way, it's best to just crash it or dump it on the water. And then it kind of forces the kite back open, forces the air into the kite to expand and untangle. It took three tries this time to work, but it did eventually work and I was able to relaunch and continue to kite. I started off on my 11 meter, you know, I was jumping probably about 10, 11 meter jumps and moved to the 9 and jumping higher with the 9. You know why? Because the 9, you could move it a lot fast, faster, so you could generate a lot more lift, you know, with the speed. But awesome day. I'm exhausted. It's time to call it a day. As always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like this coming soon. All right, see you next time. Bye.